dear friends science may be considered as a systematically organized body of knowledge on a particular subject and art as an act of expressing feelings thoughts and observations in an excellent way homiletics may be seen as the science and art of preparing and preaching effective homilies or religious discourses it is in fact a branch of rhetoric the discipline of homiletics comes under pastoral theology which is called also practical theology preaching has always remained as an integral part of the pastoral life of the church the word homiletics has derived from the word homily which basically means a sermon it may be defined as the study of the analysis classification preparation composition and the delivery of sermons in religious circles it may be seen as the application of the various principles of rhetoric in christian preaching one who takes keen interest in studying and implementing these principles is called a homilist or preacher in the old testament from the time of ezra preaching had become an integral part of praise and worship it comprised of reading out a portion of the torah written in hebrew and then paraphrasing it or explaining it in arabic after the destruction of the jerusalem temple in many places synagogues were established and the role of the sermon all the more increased when jesus came he preached and also commissioned his apostles to go around and do the same his sermons were of two kinds the missionary meant for outsiders and the ministerial meant for those who were part of the movement he started his intention was to sow the seed of god's word and thus he does not seem to have followed in a specific method or principles of preaching in his ministry the apostles of jesus also continued the same pattern in the preaching of paul we can see that he was not against adopting philosophical arguments and rhetorical techniques in his preaching ministry he took care to prepare himself properly and added many philosophical arguments in his preaching when he spoke to the people of eriopagus in athens greece the center of intellectual discussion during that time acts of the apostles chapter 17 paul was rather embarrassed to see that his preaching did not have much impact on the listeners therefore he made up his mind to preach not with the wise and persuasive words but with a demonstration of the spirit's power 1 corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 in short paul preferred a straightforward non rhetorical approach in the early church with the 4th century there had emerged the custom of reading out a passage from the law or the prophets or epistles or gospels followed by a sermon the most outstanding preachers of the early church are saint basil saint ambrose saint augustine saint gregory the great and saint john chrysostom many of them were skilled orators and integrated appropriately some of those techniques into their preaching saint john chrysostom is considered to be the greatest of them all whose sermons began with an exegesis of a biblical text followed by application to practical life 
At a later stage, scholastic philosophy influenced homiletics, emphasizing the need of training the mind in analysis, logic, or being concise and precise, having both intellectual and emotional appeal. Augustine, in his book, Four of DDC, described homiletics in relation to the classical theory of oratory. According to him, a homily should have five important parts, the choice of the subject and decision of the order, the structure of the oration, the arrangement of words and the figure of speech, learning by heart and the delivery. He spoke about three types of sermons, to teach, to amuse, and to persuade. He also gave great importance to regular practice, continuous and diligent study of the Bible, the need to look for wisdom rather than knowledge, proclamation of the truth rather than eloquence. According to him, the most significant practice and discipline is prayer. Prayer before and after a sermon. Moreover, he was fully convinced that the time of prayer is the most precious time because it is at this time when all the audience can understand the truth of God more fully and encounter God. He also highlighted that the life of a preacher should be an eloquent sermon. The more a preacher strives up the humility, discipline, prayer and love, the better his sermon becomes. But the greatest of all these is love. In homiletics, what we normally see is a beautiful blend of biblical teaching and rhetoric. Yet, we should not lose sight of the real purpose of homiletics. According to Karl Barth, preaching of a homily has a different purpose. The effectiveness of a homily does not depend on the stylistic presentation or the persuasive skills used. Therefore, according to him, both rhetoric and homiletics should be treated separately. However, we need to bear in mind that having deep knowledge of the Bible and applying the various tools of rhetoric can be also very helpful in preaching. It can shake up, ignite and move people who remain passive listeners. At the same time, the preacher should also keep in mind that God can work through anyone even with those who do not have any expertise in any field, to touch the hearts of people. The core of preaching ministry is to draw vital lessons from the Bible and to share those insights with the people who are assembled to listen to God's Word. As a result of that, the people can really encounter God by listening to the living voice of the preacher who has taken care to understand, accept, and live the Word of God. Therefore, the most important task of a preacher is not simply confined to the effective communication of God's message, but in concretely living out his life of faith in Christ, which can be easily seen and felt and experienced by the people around him. Thanks.